Sales and Marketing Executive Brief, and this week we're talking about our first contact. Which is not like Star Trek is the first contact, but close. It was a great movie, but uh, that's not what we're talking about. So, I'm Paula Williams. And uh, the guy on the ride is talking, that's me, John Williams. <clears throat> and we are ABCI, Aviation Business Consultants International, and our mission... Is to help you guys sell more of your products and services. Exactly. Um, so traditionally in the aviation industry, there have been random acts of marketing, and we've been talking in this whole series about making that less random by using a system, this system, uh, which is our long cycle marketing, phase one, advertising and prospecting, phase two, building credibility and closing sales, and phase three, referrals, resales, and recaptures. And of course, the whole series this month has been in phase one, um, advertising and prospecting. And today we're finishing up um, this series with the last step in phase one, which is our initial sales call or our initial contact with the customer, whether that's in person or on the phone. Um, so that is really important because it's the first time someone's creating an actual relationship or meeting in person, uh, which is really how things are done in the aviation industry, probably more than any other um, you know, John and I have both worked in finance and software and uh, information technology and education and military and <laughs> God knows what all else. And, um, you know, in a lot of places, things are going to um, technology. You know, people are, are connecting via the Internet. People are buying products via the Internet. But um, we found that in the aviation industry in particular, there is still a huge human element um, where there's at least phone calls. Um, and usually face-to-face -face contact um, with people uh, in the midst of a, of a transaction. So um, what we'd like to do is make sure that we've set up a good um, first impression. And one of the ways that we can do that is on that initial form in our call to action, which we talked about um, earlier in the series. Would you like us to contact you? If someone clicks the box saying, yes, please call me, um, that's pretty specific. And the phone number you get is probably going to be a pretty good one. Mm -hmm. And that specifically means that this is probably one of the old school aviation decision makers who really wants to do business in person and really wants to talk to a human being on the phone. Um, you know, so before you send them any other information, um, you should really have this form rigged to go to your email um, so that you get it instantly. And then, you know, you can respond as soon as you can within, um, minutes, hours, you know, certainly by before the end of the day with a phone call. And those almost always are well received because they've requested it. Another way that people might request um, a salesperson to call them, um, this is a, a little widget that we have on our website. Um, find 30 minutes on the phone to talk about your marketing objectives. And this lets people um, click a button and use some software to find a time on my schedule um, and then, you know, it asks them a question about, you know, what do you want to talk about more specifically? Um, and that's another way that people request um, a contact from us. And we really prefer it this way when someone has requested a contact from us rather than making a phone call. Um, another thing is when people leave you a voicemail. Um, it is very seldom that I actually pick up the phone when I get a, an unscheduled call um, just because I'm on the phone all the time. But I often get voicemail saying, I was reading your website and I have some questions about the specific thing that I was reading about, so please give me a call. Um, so it, it can happen any number of ways that someone enters your marketing system and requests um, a contact. So when that happens, what do you do? Um, first of all, by not picking up the phone, you're at an advantage because you have time to prepare. Uh, before you get on the phone with this person. And here are some of the things that we like to do to prepare. The first thing I do is I look up the the person on LinkedIn. Um, almost everybody in any kind of a decision-making capacity has a profile on LinkedIn, um, at least 90% of them, it seems. Um, I will also Google that person and find out any recent news about that company. You know, were they recently acquired? Um, you know, were they recently, did they recently acquire someone else? Did they recently hire a bunch of people? Um, all of those things are really interesting to me in helping prepare for this phone call and finding out more about this person's situation and why they may be needing um, our products and services. 
Um, I'll look at their website if I can find it, and in a lot of cases I can. Um, often their email gives you a clue to what their website is. Um, you know, if they're coming from cutteraviation.com, then I can, of course, look up cutteraviation.com on the website or, and, uh, or on the, the Internet and look at their um, look at their web page. I can look at recent news on their website and so on. Um, things that I am looking for in all of these three sources and any others that I can find are background information. Um, you know, of why they may be calling or, you know, what they may need. I'm looking for an icebreaker. Um, do you remember what FORM stands for? Family, Organization, Recreation, and Mission. Right. Um, there's a lot of different ways that people say it. You, um, family it can also be occupation, recreation, and mission. Um, you know, so maybe they're a, um, a particular type of, of person. Maybe they were a pilot in a previous life. You can find out their history on LinkedIn and see... Um, what their uh, experience is, and sometimes that informs how you'll relate to them and the kinds of language that you'll use. Um, a list of questions that you want to ask them. That's always good to, uh, to think through and to write an outline. So if you take 15 minutes before a phone call and do these four things, um, you know, using these tools, you'll be a lot more comfortable and they'll be a lot more comfortable because um, you're not starting from scratch and they don't have to tell you everything. Um, that said, um, you also want to kind of adjust your your attitude. Um, a lot of people, a lot of salespeople come in with kind of a defensive sort of a, an attitude. Um, I really like this picture, and I'll <laughs> tell you why. <laughs> there is a story behind this. Um, there was a dog that actually used to live next door to our house, and we had a lot of kids and a lot of dogs in the neighborhood, and this one was huge. It was a great Pyrenees. And uh, this was the coolest dog because he was great at playing with the other kids and the other dogs and everything. And when he'd had enough, he would just get up, very gently shake off whoever was hanging on him and walk away. You know, he had no need to be defensive. He had no need to do anything other than wag his tail and, and do whatever because he was a very big dog. Um, and what that does, if you think like a big dog, um, in the sense that you're in the position of they would need something from you. Um, so, you know, they're approaching you. Um, that may, puts you in a different situation than if you're making a, a cold call. The second thing is, if you don't like the situation, you can walk away. So, you know, if the conversation turns in a direction you don't like, if um, they don't seem like a good fit for you, um, you know, there's no need to get defensive or angry or anything else. You just very gently shake them off and walk away. <laughs> so, you know, I really like that analogy. And I have a, um, a picture of a big dog next to my phone. So, you know, that really helps set that, uh, that attitude. So, you know, in your initial call, you want to not make assumptions uh, and not spill your candy in the lobby, which is something that we learned from Sandler Sales. Um, and how you do that is by doing um, a lot of listening. Listening, exactly. And very little talking. And very little talking. So, um, you know, you want to make sure that you are spending 70% of your time listening and 30% of your time talking. Um, and during that 30% that you are talking, you want to be asking good questions. Um, the first question I usually ask when I'm on the phone with somebody, even if I've just confirmed their appointment the night before, is, is this still a good time? That gives the person an opportunity to say, you know what, my hair is on fire, or, you know, we've got the FAA here, or, you know, whatever is going on. And then you know, you know, let's not have this call now um, while this person is distracted. It's a waste of everyone's time. Um, so we'll reschedule. And, uh, you know, that's still a graceful way of giving them an out and not having a, um, a bad experience. Tell me more about blank. And, you know, that would be something that you found out during your research or something that they um, initiated the call with. Um, you want them to do most of the talking, even if you know everything that they're telling you, um, let them tell you. <laughs> and there are lots of good reasons for that. It really helps um, develop trust. And, you know, if you're willing to invest that time up front, um, it really does, does help a lot. And it really sets you apart from all of the salespeople who just do all the talking and uh, 
none of the listening and are, are too fast to get to their point. And it helps them clarify what their problem really is when they try to define it to you. Exactly. In fact, they are your best salesperson because letting them define their problem um, is the very most productive use of your time as a salesperson because you don't have to convince them it's coming out of their mouth, which is fantastic. How are you handling this problem now? Um, this will sometimes lead you down the road of, you know, are they using a competitor and they don't like them for whatever reason? Or, um, you know, does someone in the company have a prejudice against the particular product or service that you have? Um, you know, why are you not <laughs> buying our product or service now? What's holding you back? Um, you know, that can be very useful information. Also, who works with you on this? Um, this kind of helps you qualify this person. Is this really the decision maker? Um, you know, or do you need to go farther up in the food chain? Or, um, you know, is this really the wrong person to be talking to? It also lets you frame your expectations of, is this the person making the decision? Or is this going to be a much larger effort where you have to infiltrate a large organization and several committees and um, several different boards? in order to get a decision made. And that's fine too, but you know, knowing that going in is, is a very good thing. So all of that happens during the phone call. Um, when you have five minutes left, and these initial phone calls are usually 30 minutes. So um, ask the question, what do you see as the best next step? Typically, you'll have an idea of what you want that to be. Um, you know, for us, often it's uh, um, our marketing flight plan or something like that. So we have a solution in our pocket in case they ask us, you know, what do you suggest? But we want them to make the suggestion first and say, um, you know, well, I need to take this information that I've just acquired and round up my troops and get back to you about this. Um, you know, so whatever it is, you want a very specific next step. Um, whether that's, a, should I call you back in a week? Should I call you back in a month? Should I prepare some materials with the specific information for, for this specific purpose? Um, you know, you want to make sure that there are action items on both sides of the fence. So you're both uh, anticipating what uh, is appropriate. And the other thing is you always want to send a summary by email um, after the uh, conversation so that you're sure that... Uh, um, everything got captured, their action items and your action items, all of those things are, are taken care of. All right, so this was a quick one, but very important. Um, I think this is one of the places where people are the most nervous is making that first um, phone call. And we've actually had companies that just don't make them because they are so scared um, of picking up the phone. But it really does help if you, number one, they're calling you, number two, um, you have some information, so you've done the preparation. So use the process to set you up for success. Let them request the appointment whenever possible. Give your prospects the opportunity to ask for the call, either using your website or a form or um, some other method. Uh, prepare for the call and write down your list of questions. Uh, you want to confirm calls the day before. And again, you know, you want to even when you get on the phone with them, confirm this is still a good time. You want to be the big dog. Um, you know, you're the one who has the answers, which is great. Um, but you're also you're going to be friendly and open and approachable, but you're not going to take any crap. So <laughs> it's a good, uh, good attitude to have. You want to listen 70% of the time and ask questions the other 30. Um, and remember, you always have time to do your sales presentation later on a second or third call. My ask questions, that does not mean pontificate and try to sell. Exactly. Don't frame those questions around, um, you know, because people are smart. They see a, a, a baited question or a loaded question. Right. You really want to understand them and spend this whole first call on them as much as possible. And lastly, ask the prospect what the next step should be. And uh, do that with five minutes left in the call so that you've got some time to discuss it. And if they don't have a clue, you can suggest uh, some things and take the lead again. Um, follow up with a summary by email with, again, action items and dates on both sides. 
um, that really sets the tone for a business relationship and, and makes sure everybody is clear on expectations. So other pro programs this month, um, there's lots of them. We've been keeping them reasonably short. Um, prospecting panel discussion will be one that's uh, about an hour long, but otherwise these are, are short enough to listen to on a break and hone your skills. So thank you for joining us. This one ought to be 15 minutes is what our goal is. And see you guys next time. Thanks. Thank you. You could